Good morning world. Yesterday I had a conversation with a really good friend who suggested that I start a YouTube channel. Uh, it's not something that I would ever have considered except for the fact that he brought it up. He did also say that I need to produce content which got me thinking about life and experiences and I basically concluded that I should start by telling you a story. Uh, a story about probably the most uh, pivotal day in my life that occurred about 15 years ago. Uh, it was the day that I had uh, my plane crash. I left school and trained as a commercial pilot. I flew professionally for quite a number of years. Um, I ended up owning a skydive centre with a friend and uh, we needed uh, another aircraft so I went to go and pick that up. And it didn't go to plan at all. So, I've got a cup of coffee, it's sunrise, I'm on the 40th floor of a building in Southeast Asia, so start. I'll start with a couple of quick apologies. Firstly, I've never done anything like this. I'm not used to talking to camera. Uh, I don't really generally talk about myself much, um, and I'm not sure where this whole journey's going to lead, but my friend did say I need content, so let's start with this story. This particular day started out like any other day as a pilot. You, uh, I won't get into the technicalities of, of the actual aviation side of things. I'll just I'll give you a broad brush strokes overview of, of how the day unfolded. I did the daily inspection on the aircraft. Uh, everything was as, as good as can be expected. Sometimes aircraft aren't absolutely 100%. That one wasn't quite, but it was airworthy. The weather was bad. Uh, it was a very strong, gusty wind. Very hot conditions. Uh, I was quite experienced. I had um, over a thousand hours in over 30 different aircraft. I'd flown single engine, multi engine, I had a bit of jet time. Uh, and so I was fairly comfortable with the variables at play. I decided that the flight should go ahead. Um, we needed the aircraft back at the skydive center for uh, the upcoming event that we had. So I jumped in, fired it up, and uh, immediately realized that I was, I was probably going to be down a bit on power. Um, this was 15 years ago. I'm in my mid 40s now. Um, I was in my late, it was more than 15 years ago. I was in my late 20s then. I was, I was young and reckless. Um, some probably say I'm old and reckless now. Uh, sometimes we don't always make the best choices. Uh, maybe I didn't make the best choices that day. Uh, be that as it may, I taxied out uh, and once I ran the power up on the engine, I knew straight away that I wasn't going to get full power. It was running a bit rough. It was also hot, gusty wind, as I said. But we got airborne. It was just me, full tanks, um, 355 litres of aviation fuel in that particular aircraft from memory. Got airborne, got to about 20 or 30 feet, say 8, 10 metres. Uh, and that was about as far as, as we got. The aircraft didn't want to accelerate, it didn't want to climb. Uh, the severe turbulence, well not severe turbulence, but it was rough air, um, was causing some fairly significant handling issues. And uh, I didn't handle things as well as I could have. I had some friends on the ground, I was distracted. Um, and one thing led to another, the left wing stalled uh, and if you have an asymmetric stall in an aircraft, as in one side stalling and not the other, things are not going to stay wings level. So the aircraft started to roll quite violently. Uh, I went off centre line, uh, off the runway centre line, and there were some buildings there. Cut a long story short, this is all happening very quickly. This is probably not a long story, um, but it did play, plays out in my mind very slowly. So. Um, it seems like a long story. I caught the left wing tip on a building and I ripped the left wing off. Uh, I remember that. I remember the aircraft then uh, ploughing nose first into that building. Um, at which point, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions here. 
the seat belt broke, I think. The seat belt definitely broke, I'm pretty sure that's when it broke. It was a, a forward impact, there was two main impacts. There was a forward impact, which uh, cut me here. I headbutted the dashboard, not recommended. Probably knocked myself out at that point. Um, I do remember tearing metal noises and glass shattering noises. It's about 35 or 40 instruments in a, in a light aircraft, so there's a lot of glass floating around to break and smash. And that's probably what that noise was. Uh, then I got knocked out. As far as I can tell, I got airborne again. Um, obviously, things weren't quite going as well as they could have at that point uh, with one wing. Um, the aircraft, I think, has then spun around and I've, I've gone into the next building backwards. So the second first impact was forward and the second impact was straight back down into the seat, um, which is probably uh, why I'm here to talk about this. Uh, I woke up uh, about 15 minutes later um, to find an old friend um, on the roof. I was up in the roof, I was on the third floor of, of a hangar uh, with the aircraft just teetering uh, in the strong wind. It was obviously moving around a lot and this gentleman was trying to rescue me. He and another gentleman, another pilot, um, both were awarded um, and rightly so, they were awarded medals uh, for their bravery uh, for trying to get me out of the wreckage. Uh, it took three hours. Um, I understand it was about 60 emergency services personnel there um, trying to get me out. Uh, I had significant injuries. Uh, the first impact, I had my hand on the throttle cluster, so the first impact broke my hand and smashed my index finger across, so that was kind of bent at not the best angle. Uh, obviously I cut my head there. I also uh, broke my left leg, my left tibia down low, which is the shin bone, and I also punched my femur, your thigh bone, I punched that out backwards and dislocated it out of my hip. So I think that was what happened on the first impact. The second impact, which is the vertical one, that broke my back. Uh, not my, didn't sever my spinal cord, thankfully, but it did crush a vertebrae in my lower back. The L2 was crushed. Um, and I also punched my right foot into the floor and that shattered, that shattered my um, calcaneum, my heel bone. So I was down to one limb that was working um, and I was covered in, I ripped the left wing off which is where the fuel is, the door was gone. So when I came to I was covered in aviation fuel, I had broken hand, both legs were broken, I had broken back, dislocated hip, uh, bleeding from scalp wounds and I had one hand and the aircraft was vertical so I, was, I woke up on the dashboard um, and I actually thought everything was okay, what it is. It took a little while for me to figure out that I was in um, a bad situation. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but I thought everything was okay because I was sitting in a cockpit that I was very familiar with. But it slowly started to dawn on me that I was looking at the, the propeller spinner, the, the nose, the cone on the front of the propeller. It was a single engine propeller driven aircraft. That was sitting, it was visible. I, I shouldn't, it should have been facing the other way. So, so there was a problem door was gone, the wing was gone, there was a guy there with a ladder, um, all the instruments were broken and that's when I realised that I'd had a bad day. I actually said to my friend, what's going on? He said, you've crashed. I was thinking, no, I don't, I don't crash. I've been flying for years, I don't crash. Turns out, nope. Turns out I had. Um, and that was when, yeah, that's when the pain kicked in and from that, that point on it was three hours with no no pain relief um, while they tried to get me out. They wound up getting me out with a with a, an elevated basket. In Australia, we call them cherry pickers. Sorry if I'm doing this a lot, these little bugs. Um, and they got me out with a cherry picker um, after quite a while. Uh, there is footage of this, you can Google it. Um, I don't know if the footage is online, but I do have copies of it somewhere. There was helicopters hovering around overhead. Um, uh, it's not it's not the most pleasant footage to watch for, for me personally obviously um, but it is what it is so then they uh, they extracted me from the aircraft uh, thankfully very professional uh, operation I'll never forget the air ambulance officer he uh, stuck his head into the cockpit fairly early on and he said 
and uh, good morning, my name's Terry. I'm from the Air Ambulance Wing. I'm here to help you, can you tell me your name? And I said, yes, uh, my name's Tim James and I'm having the worst day of my life, so. He said, you're gonna be fine. And I said, yeah, I've, I've busted myself up, but brain's still working, well, as, as well as it's ever worked. So they got me out, there was a helicopter waiting. Uh, they airlifted me to uh, the nearest hospital where the rebuild process started, I guess you'd say, which took a long time. Six months in a wheelchair, half a dozen operations. Uh, learn to walk again from scratch, that's a challenge when you're in your late 20s. Uh, and then obviously, I had no, I, I lost my pilot's license as a result of the accident and I had to start the whole process over again. So, that is a little bit of a background um, story about me. As I said at the start of this little video, I'm not sure where this journey's gonna go. Uh, I'll do the YouTube video thing, uh, the YouTube channel thing. I'll post this uh, and then I'll start to post other videos um, which hopefully are of some interest to, to people. My background's aviation and now security. Uh, I'm um, into adventure sports, mountaineering, paragliding, those kinds of things. So uh, a lot of outdoor activities. I'll be able to maybe do product reviews. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, as I said, my name's Tim James. This is my YouTube channel. And I hope this little 12 minute story hasn't been too boring for you. Thank you for listening.